If you took your GoPro on your last vacation and your footage looked like this, but you want them to look like that, then you're at the right place. Let's get wet. Hi, I'm Maxim Chaminot, and I hope you're doing really well. Today we're gonna talk color. Color about your underwater footage. You are gonna find in the description below all of the timestamp for every part of the video. It's gonna be quite of a long video, so I just uh, encourage you to go and look below to see exactly on the timestamp what uh, part interests you. If you're here, it's because you took that super nice GoPro that you received for, for Christmas or, or for your birthday or that you just bought before your trip. Um, you went circling or in the water and you could realize that at the end your footage are green or blue, depending what situation. So today we're gonna see why is that happening, what, uh, what happened to the color in the water, uh, what we can do for it, uh, in the camera while we're actually shooting it and also how to correct it after using amazing tool that are actually totally free. Okay, let's go. In the water, the light is actually not behaving exactly the same way than at the surface. The light will start to get refracted and diffracted and also absorbed by the water. That means that if you stay at one, two meter and you're just in snorkeling, you might not see those effects but when you can start to go down, especially in scuba diving or in free diving, you're gonna start to lose colors. Here you can see those colors that are actually getting down. First the red, then the orange, the yellow, and after a while you just keep blue, okay? For this video, I'm aiming it to beginner level, meaning basically people that want to get uh, colors from zero to 20 meter. I'm gonna put a specific section at the end of this video, which is more of an expert view on what ha what's happening for 40 meter and, and, and plus and what we can do for that. When we talk about white balance, we talk about temperature of light, meaning from red to blue, okay? Within 3200 Kelvin, which is a really yellow light, you can see one here, to a really extreme blue light, 6000, 7000 Kelvin. Unfortunately, underwater, the problem is that the white balance is not the same as on land and our cameras are mainly made to stay on land. In our case, we want to trick a bit the white balance in order to have the right color. So you have to go in your manual, in your cameras. If you want to look into the Sony manuals, you can find them and look into your white balance. That is gonna make an incredible effect in your videos. On the pictures, if you use raw pictures, it should in theory not really matter. But in videos, this is what's gonna make the big, 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 um, the best bang for bucks for yourself. So I just took my GoPro for you guys. Um, that's a GoPro Hero 5, but it works with any type of action cam or any cam in general. Um, you're gonna want to go to your Protune menus, which we will find here, Protunes. Yeah. We want to go to your proteins menu. Once you're here, you see this WB means white balance. Auto is most of it the wrongest thing, actually the baddest thing. The wrongest? Baddest? Wrongest? Wrongest thing? <laughs> okay, let's say wrongest thing that you can do to your footage. Because the light is gonna change during the, um, during the footage and then you're gonna start with a green and then with a blue and then with a yellow. So you can see that you can choose from a panel and the image will go from blue to, you, to yellow, depending on the, the choose that I want. I unfortunately cannot give you a good setting for you as unfortunately there is <laughs> thousands of white balance possible under water. You're gonna tell me, hey Max, um, I can't really use uh, my GoPro and I can't really touch it under water. And I'm gonna say, yes, you're right. You can't use the touch screen in the back of the GoPro to select the white balance. But GoPro actually put a kind of a hidden menu. If when you use mode plus recording together and you press them, you will have this small menu in front. Here you can see that it says auto. If you say just there and you can press there and, and select the white balance, which is right for you. Here we're talking about a GoPro, but the same is true for any cameras. The footage that you're gonna see today is mainly from that GoPro Hero 5 that is here, 
but I use the same technique on my A6300 that I use on the water for mainly all of the videos, especially when I made a mess and I forgot to set the white balance, which is really bad. That's the first really big thing you can do to your footage, getting proper white balance. For certain camera, getting the white balance right uh, is actually enough to get enough red because the red is the thing that we lose the first. That's unfortunately how it works in, in, in the ocean. Uh, so you might want to use some red filter, such as this one. This red filter, which is a Keltan Spectrum for red filter, is made for my DSLR or the mirrorless that you want to use and you want to go on the water. They will like a red tint to your image. They're also quite dark, so you might have to bump up the ISO of your camera or stuff. But they are also quite expensive and they not really they don't really work at the surface. They work generally below 3 meters to 16, 18 meters. That's the first big thing that you can, can do to add red to your footage. Just just put a red filter. You can also use a flashlight, you can also use light. Um, it's actually a really nice thing to use light. Light are sometimes quite powerful, as you can see, they are pretty nice. Um, but they have still a limited range. And at one point, you are gonna see that blue green coming back. That's why we said in videography, the filter for the color and the, um, the flashlight for the detail. We're gonna put that aside and we're gonna see true, film, true footage. We went to holidays, we had not set off white balance properly and footage is not really looking nice. Let's go and see what we can do. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna be able to correct our footage in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve, just to give you a small introduction on, the, on the, the tool, is a product from Blackmagic, which is now 100% free. Uh, you can edit on it, but it was especially used for colorists in cinema, such as Hollywood production or Bollywood production, where having heavy use of Blackmagic um, DaVinci Resolve. Um, today I'm gonna explain to you some small steps that you can actually use to get better with it and just save all footage. Let's go there. So I chose different footage that were really bad. Uh, this one is pretty green, uh, which is such a shame because on it there is amazing clownfish. And I've, as if you follow me on Instagram, you see that I love this fish. So uh, we're gonna try to save that one and uh, using all oh, super nice techniques in DaVinci Resolve. So first we're gonna create a new, um, a new timeline with that project. Um, I'm just gonna cut a little bit out of that project because it's not really uh, relevant. And as you could see from the beginning of the, sh the um, footage to the end, there is such a big color shift and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna cut that. Okay, seems good. For the purpose of this video, we're not gonna go through stabilization or slow motion, just through colors and how to get back to those colors. So you can see that the anemone here is actually not that bad. Um, it, there is a bit of information in color, but it's just not popping. It's just not cool. And it's just not as reality. So, um, okay, let, let, now that we scrub on it, let's go to color, the menu called RGB Mixer, that you can see that the fourth one on top of me. And here you can see basically the amount of red or green or blue that you have in each channel. So we are gonna take our green channel and we're gonna lower the green to 40, 45. Um, it depends on the footage. And you're gonna see the funky is gonna get pink. That's normal, that's okay. No, we are gonna take the red and we're gonna put it, have it higher and bam! As we add a bit of red into the screen, then the footage starts to pop and we have a way different difference. Look, if I remove the note or if I put it back, uh, you see the immediate effect of it. Um, no, we have, like, it's not a perfect setting, it did one of the videos that you're using, but yeah. Uh, after that, I love to put a bit more red output inside of the red because like this is where the wall pop is happening. And you can see before and after, it's pretty crazy. You can see just, just with two of those twiggings what you can do with those. So yeah, uh, just one thing, don't put too much of those because you can, if you go overboard with them, you might have, um, it, it's just, just not gonna look great. 
But yeah, look, there is no comparison from, from the one before and the one after, right? So you can see here at the end that there's a bit of color shift on the on the white. Um, it's possible to correct it, not with the RGB mixer or not like, like, like this. You will have to create a new node and to try to change it a bit. So we are not gonna look at this during our videos, but um, but in case you want to correct those defects, you can just lower a bit um, the blue it puts, uh, the blue in the blue. So you might have a bit more yellowish tint. Uh, for me, I think it's okay for that shot and it's perfectly fine. But if you are picky with those colors, you might want to get a bit more in depth and looking at nodes and how they work in DaVinci Resolve. I use here Pop Resolve because it's free and there is that amazing colorist tool in it. You can also use Premiere and in Premiere Pro it's called Channel Mixer where you can actually add those red and blue. There is that amazing video of Vanessa Caracker that I'm gonna link on the, on the top here. I really strongly recommend you to go and check it out. That's basically what I'm showing you right now, but in Premiere. Okay, now we're gonna go for a second footage, um, which is an amazing bonnetsy snake that I shot in Gotao a few years ago. Uh, again, you can see that the footage is mushy, but this one has also a lack of contrast. So we're gonna want to add a bit more contrast at the same time that we're actually correcting our colors. Same thing, we create a new timeline, and then we go inside, uh, menu cut, we're just gonna cut where, where we want. Uh, here, I think it's pretty fine for the demo to, to leave it like this. So we are gonna um, go to the menu color, and once we are inside of a color, we're gonna use the same technique. We are gonna lower the green, lower the green, and we are gonna um, add a bit of red, and um, 45 is again, uh, I think the sweet spot for those videos. Um, it might change also if you are in fresh water or in salt water, as the white balance change within both. Um, on this one, I'm not gonna put as much as red output as I did on the other one, because you're gonna see it's gonna be a bit mushy. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the curve to make a nice S to have a bit more contrast in the curve. If you, haven't, if you have no idea what a curve is, um, just take a look. There is thousands of tutorials online. Um, it's a really nice thing to know. And then a bit more red and and we're good. Like uh, I think the footage looks pretty amazing. If you look at 100% now, 75% uh, now, it's, yeah, it's good. Um, before and after, uh, if I remove the node a bit, let's, let's take a look. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Like you see really the difference in it. Um, so yeah, and, and this tool, like we're using it at like 5% of what it can do, but you can do so much more with it. So um, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, here is all footage that, um, that we finished uh, once exported. Uh, here is what it looks like. beginning of the video I told you that this is more for beginners with, with the camera. Um, if you want to start to get uh, more in depth into um, deep 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 water and or cave or any other place where you have either no light or really really dark light I definitely recommend you to have one of those uh, or two of those actually or more. Um, take the maximum power light, powerful light that you can find and run them uh, next to your setup like this, you are gonna have a better balance, a better colors, and also at the same time, it's way more detail. At those steps, you don't, you will have maybe five, five, six meter of range with a uh, lamp like this one, which is the 10,000 lumen one. It's a really extremely powerful, but unfortunately, it's not that, um, it cannot see hundreds of meter. It's not gonna replace the sun. So Keldan came with uh, a concept, which is the red filter. That's gonna balance the redness and also the color from far. And on the top of, um, of the light, you're gonna have a, a spectrum filter, which is blue. And that's gonna balance the redness of the light and the filter to get a perfect lit environment. These ones are really made for professionals or where you cannot you cannot have any other choice but your footage will never look like as good as if you were in 5 to 10 meter 
and using a proper white balance and a bit of light and all of those things all combined together. I hope that you really liked that episode. For me, it's always such a pleasure to, to share with you guys and trying to, to all of us grow because I'm not always an expert with those things. I'm also learning a lot and I hope that we can learn all together to, to, to grow up uh, in the video. Please consider subscribing and putting a thumbs up. It's always helping me a lot and, and it's really nice. Also, if you have anything to say or any questions or so remark, yeah, uh, I also know that my footage was really, really shaky. Uh, if it's really like uh, really bad and if you want to see how we can stabilize that, just comment down below and it's gonna be here um, for maybe for a future episode. I guess it's time to say goodbye now and uh, to end this video. Have fun, uh, continue creating guys and uh, see you soon. Ciao.